AIM 120M ROM. The AIM 120 Advanced Medium Range Air to Air Missile, or MROM, pronounced, is a modern American beyond visual range air to air missile, VRAM, capable of all weather day and night operations. Designed with a 7 inch diameter form and fit factor, and employing active transmit receive radar guidance instead of semi active receive only radar guidance, it has the advantage of being a fire and forget weapon when compared to the previous generation Sparrow missiles. When an MROM missile is launched, NATO pilots use the brevity code FOX3. The MROM is the world's most popular beyond visual range missile, and more than 14,000 have been produced for the United States Air Force, the United States Navy, and 33 international customers. The MROM has been used in several engagements and is credited with 10 air to air kills. The AIM 7 Sparrow medium range missile, MRM, was purchased by the U.S. Navy from original developer Hughes Aircraft in the 1950s as its first operational air-to-air -air missile with beyond visual range VBR, capability. With an effective range of about, it was introduced as a radar beam riding missile and then it was improved to a semi-active radar guide missile which would home in on reflections from a target illuminated by the radar of the launching aircraft. It was effective at visual to beyond visual range. The early beam riding versions of the Sparrow missiles were integrated onto the Fay Demon and F 7U Cutlass, but the definitive AIM 7 Sparrow was the primary weapon for the all weather F 4 Phantom II fighter interceptor, which lacked an internal gun in its U.S. Navy, U.S. Marine Corps, and early U.S. Air Force versions. The F 4 carried up to four AIM 7s and built in recesses under its belly. Although designed for use against non-maneuvering targets such as bombers, because of poor performance against fighters over North Vietnam, these missiles were progressively improved until they proved highly effective in dogfights. Together with the short-range, infrared-guided AIM-9 Sidewinder, they replaced the AIM-4 Falcon IR and radar guide series for use in air combat by the USAF as well. A disadvantage to semi-active homing was that only one target could be illuminated by the launching fighter plane at a time. Also, the launching aircraft had to remain pointed in the direction of the target, within the azimuth and elevation of its own radar set, which could be difficult or dangerous in air-to-air -air combat. An active radar variant called the Sparrow 2 was developed to address these drawbacks, but the U.S. Navy pulled out of the project in 1956. The Royal Canadian Air Force, which took over development in the hopes of using the missile to arm their prospective CF 105 Aero Interceptor, soon followed in 1958. The electronics of the time simply could not be miniaturized enough to make Sparrow 2 a viable working weapon. It would take decades, and a new generation of digital electronics, to produce an effective active radar air to air missile as compact as the Sparrow. The U.S. Navy later developed the AIM 54 Phoenix Long Range Missile, LRM, for the Fleet Air Defense Mission. It was a large, Mach 5 missile designed to counter cruise missiles and the bombers that launched them. Originally intended for the straight wing Douglas F 60 missile air and then a navalized version of the F 111B, it finally saw service with the Grumman 14 Tomcat, the only fighter capable of carrying such a heavy missile. Phoenix was the first U.S. fire and forget, multiple launch, radar guided missile, one which used its own active guidance system to guide itself without help from the launch aircraft when it closed on its target. This, in theory, gave a Tomcat with a 6 Phoenix load the unprecedented capability of tracking and destroying up to six targets beyond visual range, as far as away, the only U.S. fighter with such capability. A full load of six Phoenix missiles and its dedicated launcher exceeded a typical Vietnam-era bomb load. Its service in the U.S. Navy was primarily as a deterrent, as its use was hampered by restrictive rules of engagement in conflicts such as Operations Desert Storm, Southern Watch, and Iraqi Freedom. The U.S. Navy retired the Phoenix in 2004 in light of availability of the AIM 120M ROM on the F A 18 Hornet and the pending retirement of the F 14 Tomcat from active service in late 2006. The Department of Defense conducted an extensive evaluation of air combat tactics and missile technology from 1974 to 1978 at Nellis AFB using the F-14 Tomcat and F-15 Eagle equipped with Sparrow and Sidewinder missiles as the Blue Force and Aggressor F-5E aircraft equipped with AIM-9 leaders all aspect Sidewinders as the Red Force. This joint test and evaluation, JT and E, was designated Air Combat Evaluation slash Air Intercept Missile Evaluation, as evil slash aimful. A principal finding was that the necessity to produce e illumination for the Sparrow until impact resulted in the Red Forces being able to launch their all-aspect sidewinders before impact, 
resulting in mutual kills. What was needed was Phoenix type multiple launch and terminal active capability in a Sparrow size airframe. This led to a memorandum of agreement, MOA, with European allies, principally the UK and Germany, for development, for the US to develop an advanced, medium range, air to air missile with the USAF as lead service. The MOA also assigned responsibility for development of an advanced, short range, air to air missile to the European team. This would become the British AS Ram. By the 1990s, the reliability of the Sparrow had improved so much from the dismal days of Vietnam that it accounted for the largest number of aerial targets destroyed in Desert Storm. But while the USAF had passed on the Phoenix and their own similar AIM 47YF 12 to optimize dogfight performance, they still needed a multiple launch fire and forget capability for the F 15 and F 16. And ROM would need to be fitted on fighters as small as the F 16 and fit in the same spaces that were designed to fit the Sparrow on the F-4 Phantom. The European partners needed MROM to be integrated on aircraft as small as the Sea Harrier. The U.S. Navy needed MROM to be carried on the F-A-18 Hornet and wanted capability for two to be carried on a launcher that normally carried one Sparrow to allow for more air-to-ground weapons. The MROM became one of the primary air-to-air weapons of the new F-22 Raptor fighter which needed to place all of its weapons into internal weapon space in order to help achieve an extremely low radar cross-section. MROM was developed as the result of an agreement, the family of weapons MOA, no longer in effect by 1990, among the United States and several other NATO nations to develop air-to-air -air missiles and to share production technology. Under this agreement the U.S. was to develop the next-generation medium-range missile, MROM, and Europe would develop next-generation short-range missile, ASRAM. Although Europe initially adopted the MROM, an effort to develop the Meteor, a competitor to MROM, was begun in Great Britain. Eventually the ASRAM was developed solely by the British, but using another source for its infrared seeker. After protracted development, the deployment of MROM, AIM 120A, began in September 1991 in U.S. Air Force F 15 Eagle Fighter Squadrons. The U.S. Navy soon followed, in 1993, in its F A 18 Hornet Squadrons. The eastern counterpart of MROM is the somewhat similar Russian Air Force AA-12 Adder, sometimes referred to in the West as the Omramsky. Likewise, France began its own air-to-air -air missile development with the MICA concept that used a common airframe for separate radar-guided and infrared-guided versions. MROM has an all-weather, beyond-visual range, VBR, capability. It improves the aerial combat capabilities of U.S. and Allied aircraft to meet the threat of enemy air-to-air -air weapons as they existed in 1991. MROM serves as a follow-on to the AIM-7 Sparrow missile series. The new missile is faster, smaller, and lighter, and has improved capabilities against low-altitude targets. It also incorporates a data link to guide the missile to a point where its active radar turns on and makes terminal intercept of the target. An inertial reference unit and microcomputer system makes the missile less dependent upon the fire control system of the aircraft. Once the missile closes in on the target, its active radar guides it to intercept. This feature, known as fire and forget, frees the aircrew from the need to further provide guidance, enabling the aircrew to aim and fire several missiles simultaneously at multiple targets and perform evasive maneuvers while the missiles guide themselves to the targets. The missile also features the ability to home on jamming, giving it the ability to switch over from active radar homing to passive homing, homing on jamming signals from the target aircraft. Software on board the missile allows it to detect if it is being jammed, and guide on its target using the proper guidance system. MROM uses two-stage guidance when fired at long range. The aircraft passes data to the missile just before launch, giving it information about the location of the target aircraft from the launch point and its direction and speed. The missile uses this information to fly on an interception course to the target using its built-in inertial navigation system, INS. This information is generally obtained using the launching aircraft's radar, although it could come from an infrared search and track system from a data link from another fighter aircraft, or from an AWACS aircraft. After launch, if the firing aircraft or surrogate continues to track the target, periodic updates, such as changes in the target's direction and speed, are sent from the launch aircraft to the missile, allowing the missile to adjust its course, via actuation of the rear fins, so that it is able to close to a self-homing distance where it will be close enough to catch the target aircraft in the basket. The missile's radar field of view in which it will be able to lock onto the target aircraft, unassisted by the launch aircraft. 
Fast, not all ARM services using the MROM have elected to purchase the mid-course update option, which limits MROM's effectiveness in some scenarios. The RAF initially opted not to use mid-course update for its Tornado F3 force, only to discover that without it, testing proved the MROM was less effective in beyond visual range BVR engagements than the older semi-active radar homing BAE Skyflash weapon. The AIM-120 zone radar is necessarily of limited range and power compared to that of the launch aircraft. Once the missile closes to self-homing distance, it turns on its active radar seeker and searches for the target aircraft. If the target is in or near the expected location, the missile will find it and guide itself to the target from this point. If the missile is fired at short range, within visual range, WVR, or the near BVR, it can use its active seeker just after launch making the missile truly fire and forget. Apart from the slave mode, there is a free guidance mode, called Boresight. This mode is radar guidance free, the missile just fires and locks onto the first thing it sees. This mode can be used for defensive shot, i.e. when the enemy has numerical superiority. The kill probability, P, is determined by several factors, including aspect, head-on interception, side-on or tail chase, altitude, the speed of the missile and the target and how hard the target can turn. Typically, if the missile has sufficient energy during the terminal phase, which comes from being launched at close range to the target from an aircraft with an altitude and speed advantage, it will have a good chance of success. This chance drops as the missile is fired at longer ranges as it runs out of overtake speed at long ranges, and if the target can force the missile to turn it might bleed off enough speed that it can no longer chase the target. Operationally, the missile which was designed for beyond visual range combat, has a P of 63.15%, 19 missiles for 12 kills, including the Syrian Su-22 downed by a U.S. Navy F-A-18E. The targets included six MiG-29s, a MiG-25, a MiG-23, two Su-22s, a Gallup and a U.S. Army Black Hawk that was targeted by mistake. There are currently four main variants of MROM, all in service with the United States Air Force, United States Navy, and the United States Marine Corps. The AIM 120A is no longer in production and shares the enlarged wings and fins with the successor AIM 120B. The AIM 120C has smaller clipped aero surfaces to enable internal carriage on the USAF F 22 Raptor. AIM 120B deliveries began in 1994. The AIM 120C deliveries began in 1996. The C variant has been steadily upgraded since it was introduced. The AIM 120C6 contained an improved fuse target detection device compared to its predecessor. The AIM 120C7 development began in 1998 and included improvements in homing and greater range, actual amount of improvement unspecified. It was successfully tested in 2003 and is currently being produced for both domestic and foreign customers. It helped the U.S. Navy replace the F 14 Tomcats with F A 18 E slash F Super Hornets. The loss of the F-14's long-range AIM-54 Phoenix missiles, already retired, is offset with a longer-range MROM-D. The lighter weight of the advanced MROM enables an F-A-18E-F pilot greater bring-back weight upon carrier landings. The AIM-120D is an upgraded version of the MROM with improvements in almost all areas, including 50% greater range, than the already extended range AIM-120C-7 and better guidance over its entire flight envelope yielding an improved kill probability, p. Raytheon began testing the D model on August 5, 2008, the company reported that an AIM-120 launched from an F-A-18F Super Hornet passed within lethal distance of a QF-4 target thrown at the White Sands missile range. The range of the AIM-120D is classified, but is thought to extend to about the AIM-120D, pay phase 4. Formerly known as AIM 120C8, is a development of the AIM 120C with a two way data link, more accurate navigation using a GPS enhanced TMU, an expanded no escape envelope, and improved TOBS, high off bore sight, capability. The AIM 120D is a joint USAF USN project, and is currently in the testing phase. The USN was scheduled to field it from 2014, and AIM 120D will be carried by all Pacific carrier groups by 2020. Although the 2013 sequestration cuts could push back this latter date to 2022, the Royal Australian Air Force requested 450 AIM 120D missiles, which would make it the first foreign operator of the missile. The procurement, approved by the U.S. government in April 2016, 
will cost $1.1 billion and will be integrated for use on the F-A-18F Super Hornet, EA-18G Growler and the F-35 Lightning II aircraft. There are also plans for Raytheon to develop a ramjet-powered derivative of the NRAM, the future medium-range air-air missile, FMRAM. It is not known whether the FMRAM will be produced since the target market, the British Ministry of Defence, has chosen the Meteor missile over the FMRAM for a BDR missile for the Eurofighter Typhoon aircraft. Raytheon is also working with the Missile Defense Agency to develop the network-centric airborne defense element, NCAID, an anti-ballistic missile derived from the AIM-120. This weapon will be equipped with a ramjet engine and an infrared homing seeker derived from the Sidewinder missile. In place of a proximity-fused warhead, the NCAID will use a kinetic energy hit-to-kill vehicle based on the one used in the Navy's RIM-161 standard missile 3. The 120A and 120B models are currently nearing the end of their service life while the 120D variant has just entered full production. NROM was due to be replaced by the USAF, the U.S. Navy, and the U.S. Marine Corps after 2020 by the joint dual-role air dominance missile, Next Generation Missile. This was unexpectedly terminated in the 2013 budget plan, and so the future replacement is uncertain. In 2017, Exploratory work on the replacement called Long Range Engagement Weapon was started. Raytheon successfully tested launching MROM missiles from a five missile carrier on a M1097 Humvee. This system will be known as the SLAMRAM, Surface Launched, SL and MROM. They received their initial guidance information from a radar not mounted on the vehicle. Since the missile is launched without the benefit of an aircraft speed or high altitude, its range is considerably shorter. Raytheon is currently marketing an SLM ROM X, purported to be an extended range M ROM and bearing a resemblance ATO the RIM 162 ESSM. The Norwegian Advanced Surface to Air Missile System, NASAMS, developed by Kongsberg Defense and Aerospace, consists of a number of vehicle pulled launch batteries, containing six M ROMs each, along with separate radar trucks and control station vehicles. A more recent version of the program is the High Mobility Launcher. Made in cooperation with Raytheon, Kongsberg Defense and Aerospace was already a subcontractor on the SLAM RAM system, where the launch vehicle is a Humvee, M1152A1 HMMWV, containing four MROMs each. While still under evaluation for replacement of current U.S. Army assets, the SLM ROM has been deployed in several nations' military forces. The United Arab Emirates, UAE has requested the purchasing of SLM ROM as part of a larger $7 billion foreign military sales package. The sale would include 288 MROM C-7 missiles. The U.S. Army has test-fired the SLM ROM from a HIMARS artillery rocket launcher as a common launcher, as part of a move to switch to a larger and more survivable launch platform. On January 6, 2011, Secretary of Defense Robert Gates announced that the U.S. Army has decided to terminate acquisition of the SLAM RAM as part of a budget-cutting effort. The National Guard Association of the United States has sent a letter asking for the United States Senate to stop the Army's plan to drop the SLAM RAM program because without it there would be no path to modernize the Guards and slash TWQ-1 Avenger battalions. On February 22, 2015 Raytheon announced an extended range upgrade to NASAM's launched MROM calling it MROM ER. This combines the MROM seeker with the S rocket motor. The MROM was used for the first time on December 27, 1992, when a USAF F-16D shot down an Iraqi MiG-25 that violated the southern no-fly zone. This missile had been returned from the flight line as defective a day earlier. MROM gained a second victory in January 1993 when an Iraqi MiG-23 was shot down by a USAF F-16C. The third combat use of the MROM was in 1994, when a Republic Srpska Air Force J-21 Jastrup aircraft was shot down by a USAF F-16C that was patrolling the UN-imposed no-fly zone over Bosnia. In that engagement, at least three other Serbian aircraft were shot down by USAF F-16C fighters using AIM-9 missiles, see Banja Luka incident for more details. At that point, three launches in combat had resulted in three kills resulting in the MROMs being informally named Slammer in the second half of the 1990s. In 1998 and 1999 MROMs were again fired by USAF F-15 fighters at Iraqi aircraft violating the no-fly zone, but this time they failed to hit their targets. During the spring of 1999, MROMs saw their main combat action during Operation Allied Force, the Kosovo bombing campaign. 
six Serbian MiG-29 were shot down by NATO four USAF F-15CS, one USAF F-16C, and one Dutch F-16A MLU, all of them using AIN-120 missiles, the supposed kill by the F-16C may have actually been friendly fire, an SA-7 manpad fired by Serbian infantry. On June 18, 2017, a US F-A-18E Super Hornet engaged and shot down a Sukhoi Su-22 of the Syrian Air Force over northern Syria, using an AIM-120. The Su-22 had previously avoided an AIM-9X Sidewinder by using flares. As of 2017, the AIM-120 MRAM has shot down 10 aircraft, 6 MiG-29s, 1 MiG-25, 1 MiG-23, 1 Su-22, 1 Soko J-21 Jastrav and two UH-60 Blackhawk. The latter being a friendly fire incident in 1994 when F-15 fighters patrolling Iraq's northern no-fly zone inadvertently shot down a pair of U.S. Army Blackhawk helicopters. Since 2007 Raytheon has continued to slip on MROM deliveries, leading the USAF to withhold $621 million in 2012 on account of 193 missiles not delivered. In August 7, 2018 Spanish Air Force Eurofighter EF-2000 accidentally launched a missile in Estonia. There were no human casualties, but 10-day search operation for missile remains was unsuccessful and unknown status of missile, self-destruction in air or unexploded landing, had created dangerous situation for populace. Canadair, now Bombardier, had largely helped with the development of the AIM-7 Sparrow and Sparrow II and assisted to a lesser extent in the AIM-120 development. Canada had placed an order for 256 AIM-120s, but cancelled half of them after engine ignition problems due to cold weather conditions. The AIM-9X and AIM-7 were ordered as replacements. In early 1995 South Korea ordered 88 AIM-120A missiles for its KF-16 fleet. In 1997 South Korea ordered 737 additional AIM-120B missiles. In 2006 Poland received AIM-120C-5 missiles to arm its new F-16C-D Block 52 plus fighters. In early 2006, the Pakistan Air Force, PAF, ordered 500 AIM-120C-5 AMROM missiles as part of a $650 million F-16 ammunition deal to equip its F-16C-D Block 5052 plus an F-16A-15 MLU fighters. The F got the first three F-16C-D Block 5052 plus aircraft on July 3, 2010 and first batch of AMROMs on July 26, 2010. In 2007, the United States government agreed to sell 218 AIM-120C-7 missiles to Taiwan as part of a large arms sales package that also included 235 AGM-65 G-2 Maverick missiles. Total value of the package, including launchers, maintenance, spear parts, support and training rounds, was estimated at around 421 US dollars million. This supplemented an earlier Taiwanese purchase of 120 AIM-120C-5 missiles a few years ago. 2008 has brought announcements of new or additional sales to Singapore, Finland, Morocco and South Korea. In December 2010 the Swiss government requested 150 AIM-120C-7 missiles. Sales to Finland have stalled, because the manufacturer has not been able to fix a mysterious bug that causes the rocket motors of the missile to fail in cold tests. In May 5, 2015, the State Department has made a determination approving a possible foreign military sale to Royal Malaysian Air Force for AIM-120C-7 MROM missiles and associated equipment, parts and logistical support for an estimated cost of $21 million. In March 2016, the U.S. government approved the sales of AIM-120C-7 missiles to the Indonesian Air Force to equip their fleet of F-16CD Block 32 Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.